into midweek where it is warm, cozy, and we are fighting the ice age. I hope you're doing well. It's been a long week for a lot of our folks. Um, my good friends, without power, Pastor Jeff, um, he does have power, just. Oh, yes. But no power at home. No, and without power, uh, Pastor JP, and you are um, actually, you're, um, you moved out of your house. Yeah, we moved into Jill's grandma's house. Nice. Way to go, Jill's grandma's house. Um, so they're kind of estimating power back in our neighborhood. I tell people March 1st, and now it's becoming a reality, right? Yeah, that's exactly what I started telling people. Yeah. So what's it like? Um, this is completely off script. What's it like to go without a shower for three weeks? I'm just kidding. Uh. <laughs> we, we all met down here Sunday morning. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord for a church that has showers, right? Yep. Wow. That's so cool. Day. Well, guys, thanks for being here today. We want to talk a little bit about missions and some uh, work that you're doing. And uh, Pastor Jeff, you're leading, and uh, Jonathan, you're on this team. Um, also, uh, you're leading a team down to DR. And people are like, they're going to DR? Uh, I'm sure you've had that response. So many times. And 43 people are going to join you. What are you going to do down there? Uh, we are um, primarily going to um, provide some respite and some encouragement for our friends uh, with Time Ministries. It has been a year since they have had, they've had one team in a year. Um, our trip got canceled spring break last year, uh, right when COVID hit. So no one's going to the DR. So there are pastors that are literally meeting in chairs underneath trees that are in the queue to get a chapel built for them that have been just sitting there waiting, not literally waiting under the tree, but waiting um, for the Americans to come down and build them a chapel. So we are so excited. We have been persistent. We have been resolute in our determination to get down there. We have had bumps and barriers along the way, uh, but it has really galvanized our team. It's been really fun to watch our team come together. So we are, are hopeful that nothing is going to change between now and March 19th, that we're going to travel down to the DR, we're going to bless our, our friends on the field, build a chapel, uh, work with the kids in the community, and um, just be there available to whatever God has for us. Pastor Jeff, is the, the, the pastor and the group of people that you're going to be working with, that was the one you were going to do last year, correct? Honestly, I did tell you that. That just recently changed. Um, the, the missionaries... The latest yeah, up-to-date yeah, news. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, hot off the presses. Okay. Um, yes, there was a... Um, I think it was the missionaries actually just knocked okay. it out for him. Yeah. We got a new pastor. Now, the cool thing about this is in all the times we've been there, we've never actually had an opportunity to build a chapel, do our sports ministry and our VBS ministry in the exact same community. So this time they're going to all be kind of uh, consolidated in one little area, which will be a neat opportunity for us. So we got a new kind of a new little group of, of you know, folks to minister to and we're fired up. And there's been, I'm sure, a few barriers this year of travel with COVID. Yes. But you guys are overcoming those and you have all kinds of medical advice coming in and... Doing yeah. well. Many, many conversations. We are uh, double covered. We have two different insurance policies. Uh, we are going to be quadruple masked. We are following every protocol above and beyond the call of duty to make sure we're keeping people safe. We are honoring all the, the rules and regulations. And we are um, moving forward because the Great Commission doesn't go on pause for a pandemic, right? And we are going to move forward in a responsible way, filled with passion and conviction that God's going to take care of us. Jonathan, tell us how you're going to help and the team is going to help and kind of in a critical time right now, but to raise some funds to go, but also to meet some very critical needs. Tell us a little bit about some of the teams and people that are available that you're work leading with and uh, working with. Yeah, so uh, we have, like Jeff said, we have 43 people going down to the DR with us, and I'm kind of leading up this team of people who are still trying to raise funds uh, to get down to the DR. And with all the ice storm happening and with all the branches and trees and power outages and everything, this has provided an opportunity for us to do yard work for several people already. Um, but what we wanted to do is there's no easy way for us to get in contact with you. Just like, hey, do you need power? 
other than these midweek messages. And so if you have limbs down, if you have a tree blocking your driveway and you just need some help getting it moved, the DR team um, would love to come to your place, uh, get some work done, and we would be blessed if you would make a contribution to our trip as well uh, as we help you out and you help us get down to the DR. That is so good. I, I cannot imagine how much need there is out there. So, and, and by the way, would it be okay if some of our folks said, uh, we have some friends that may not go to our church, but it's a neighbor and Absolutely. we would extend that. So Absolutely. where do they call to get a hold of you? They can call me at the church. They can call my cell phone number. Sean will put it right below here. Or they can email me. Um, there's no promises of when we'll be able to get to you. This is going to be probably a list of uh, plenty of different locations that we'll be going to. But we will do our very best to get to your house. Uh, the highest priority needs uh, will probably be first, though. All right. Guys, thanks for coming in. I know, Pastor Jeff, you've got a huge busy morning, so I'm going to let you uh, run down the road. And uh, that way we can keep our social distancing. Awesome. See ya. God bless, guys. Thanks. Today is uh, the first day of Lent. Now, that might be a word you didn't expect to come out of a Baptist pastor. Um, that's because I think a lot of Baptists kind of hear Lent and they think, oh, that's the Catholic Church or that's the Orthodox Church or that's the Anglican Church. Uh, the reality is, Lent is a Christian practice. It really is. It's not something limited to them. What is Lent? Well, it comes, it's a Latin word that comes from 40th. Where did that come from? Well, it's a period of time of what we call preparation. It's the 40 days, plus or minus a few, in terms of preparation for Easter. The way I look at it is, it is preparation for celebration. Have you ever had a party that you didn't prepare for? I mean, in fact, you can't. You can't have a party. You can't have an anniversary that you don't prepare for. You're always doing those things. And in fact, uh, probably those of you who are good preparers and, and you, know, you take your time and all those details, the better you prepare, the better the celebration is. That's the way I look at Lent. It's not uh, a Catholic thing. It's not an Orthodox thing. It's a Christian thing. If you want to celebrate Easter well, you have to prepare for it. Well, what is this 40 days of preparation? It comes from the life of Christ when he went into the desert and he was, remember, baptized. Then he went into the desert and he took on the lies of the enemy and the manipulation of the enemy and the temptations of the enemy. And that's where the church kind of picked up this sacrificial season of Lent in through preparation of fasting or of eliminating something of, you know, some people eliminate certain things that they love, sugar or coffee. Uh, what we're really doing is we're ceasing or closing or uh, restricting the body's desires that we might open the spirit's movement in our life. I want to encourage you to practice Lent. Why? Because I think the celebration of Easter is oftentimes connected to the preparation for Easter. If you wake up and it's Easter Sunday morning and you're going to be like, man, it's resurrection day. I, that's always a great day. And it's always a day of celebration in the church. It is here. But imagine if you thought about it for 40 days. And imagine if you kind of walked the journey of Christ. So I want to encourage you to consider practicing some form of Lent, and that is preparation. 40 days to restrict something. A lot of people enter into fasting. Uh, some actually will enter into the full 40 days of fasting. It's where, again, you kind of cease the stomach and the desires of the flesh to open your heart to the work of the Spirit. It's exactly, is it not, what happened to Jesus? Because what was the nature of the temptations? They said it was the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life. So this year, I invited our staff, and some of them are participating, many of them are, in various forms of preparation for the celebration. So I hope that you might kind of participate with us. Uh, one of the things that I'm 
pulling together is the 40 days for life that is starting today. And that is what we're doing is we're praying for the life of children, uh, the life of seniors, because I think in our country at both ends, they're threatened in terms of how we see them. So I'm using these 40 days to battle for, in my heart, uh, children, uh, battle for uh, people at risk around the world. Um, and I'm doing some things uh, that are, the Lord has just called me to do. All of them preparation for the celebration of Easter. I encourage you to do that. To number one, how can I prepare by restricting the flesh to unleash the spirit? And how can I prepare by entering into the spiritual battle that we have? I hope you'll join us in this battle for life and for the protection of those who are innocent and those who are vulnerable. God bless you. Uh, we'll enjoy together this celebration. We're going to be back together this weekend, continuing the series, Questions for God. We got launched last weekend. I hope you could join us. I know there was a little delay on the stream because we had some internet problems. Um, can you imagine a year where we've canceled church for a riot? We've canceled church for a virus. We've canceled church for ice. We've canceled church for a fire. I mean, almost sounds like Matthew 24. Wow. We're going to be back on this week and we're going to be ready for you either live or streamed. God bless you. Have a great day.